Hi there and welcome to Make It With Miss Mandy. Today I'm going to be showing you how to put together this 3D kitchen mixer. This has lots of fun little elements to it and it's just a really cute project to put together overall and I can't wait to show you how to do it. So head on over to designsbymissmandy.com to download the free template, gather up your supplies and let's get started. The supplies you'll need for this project are cardstock, about eight sheets in various colors, hot glue, precision craft glue or a glue stick, a paper fastener along with a bead, a cutting machine or X-Acto knife, and my template which can be found at designsbymissmandy.com. Other optional but helpful supplies include decorative ribbon and a bone folder. If you need help figuring out how to set up the file that includes score lines, be sure to check out the tutorial I made on the subject. So I just finished cutting out all of my pieces and now we're ready to start layering our decorative ones. So as you can see, I'm going for a little bit different look this time. I just thought it'd be fun to try something different. So I'm going to be using um, blue paper for the base instead of purple. And then I found this really cute B pattern paper that I'm going to be using as the decorative panels. So the ones that we're going to be starting with are these pieces, this one, and these two. These ones will also have decorative layers on them later, but we're going to um, not do it at this time because they are going to be curved. Usually whenever you see a piece that has a bunch of these little tabs, it means that it's eventually going to be curved somehow. And so for that reason, I don't like to put the decorative panels on first because then it has a hard time curving later on. So I'm going to set these ones aside along with their corresponding panels, um, which will be the longest decorative piece as well as there's two that are almost the same size the one that's like slightly longer that one i'm going to set aside the one that's a little bit shorter is going to pair up with this piece and going to go here these ones are pretty obvious as to where they go this one's going to go here and actually no yeah this one's going to go here. This one's going to go like that. These two are going to go here and here. So I'm just going to glue these on. With those decorative elements in place, the next thing we're going to do is work on our little sliding lever. So I'm gonna set these pieces aside for now. Take this one with the little hole in it and grab my brad or paper fastener, whatever you call it. I always grew up calling these things brads, but if that's not what you call it, that's fine too. Um, you can also grab this little circle piece as well as a bead. So what I'm going to do is just slip this little guy in here and I don't want it to be terribly tight. Um, so I'm going to want to leave a little bit of wiggle room so that it has some space to move around. There we go. Make sure that it can slide. And next I'm going to attach this circle with some hot glue. Then we're just going to attach our bead to the opposite side. There we go. The next thing we're gonna work on is building the top portion of our kitchen mixer. And by that, I mean this upper section right here. So to do that, we are going to need these two pieces as well as these two rectangular pieces. And these look somewhat similar, so it can be kind of hard to know which one goes where. Um, but hopefully these little tabs on the side can give you a little bit of an indication of which um, sides they're going around. So we're basically going to be following the perimeter of this shape. And so um, all of these corners are curved except for the one in the very front. And um, along that side, we're gonna have this fold right here. So I can kind of show you. 
So this side is going to go along here and then this end is going to come up and then curve around, oops, get in the frame, Mandy, there we go. Um, curve around the top part right here. Okay, and then the other hint that you have with these two pieces are these weird little bigger tabs right here. These are going to end up coming together at the end like this. So obviously I don't have any of my folds in place right now, but basically the shape is going to be like this, a little prettier though. <laughs> so basically fold along all of your score lines and then any of the edges that have these tabs kind of just give it a little bit of a curl if you can using either like a scoring tool like this. This is a little bit short for this. So I might use like the edge of my table just to give it a little bit of a curve so it's easier later on. And yeah, then we're just gonna work our way around the perimeter and I'll be attaching each of these tabs along the edge. So I just finished up doing this side and now I'm going to attach the other side. Before I do, I'm just going to address something really quickly. I get a lot of questions about um, why I choose to use which glues uh, that I use. <laughs> I often use this uh, Barely Arts Precision Craft Glue, um, but I also use hot glue pretty often. The way I decide which one to use is <laughs> somewhat random to be honest um, but basically if I need something to be like really flush and not stick out at all I really try to use um, this glue because it'll bond um, really closely to the paper that it's being attached to whereas hot glue will often leave it like a little bit raised um, but sometimes, especially around curved edges, um, I need things to glue down really quickly. Otherwise, they could get like misaligned. And um, so therefore, sometimes I do use hot glue um, around like these littler tabs uh, because I have more control and I'm able to press down the hot glue a little bit better. And that way it dries more quickly than this glue does. So, but once again, once I got to the very end, I started using this glue again because the tip of it is really small and I was able to get into that tiny little crevice. Um, so sometimes you just have to do what you've got to do. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter. You can use whatever glue you want to use and whatever works for you. Um, but there's a little bit of an explanation into my uh, crazy mind and why I use which glue I do. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's attach to the other side. All right, with this piece assembled, we can now attach the decorative strip that we set aside earlier, this long rectangular one. It's basically just going to wrap around, leaving a little bit of a border, just like we did with the other pieces, and it'll look like that. With this section done, I am going to set it aside and we are now going to work on a, our lower section of the mixer. So we're gonna take these pieces and these two pieces and we're gonna start piecing this together. And this will be um, this part of the design. Okay, so to start with, I'm going to take this piece and give it a little bit of a curl. And note that one side has like a long tab on the end, right here, I'll fold it so you can see it. Like that. And then one uh, side has just a little nubby tab like that. This side is going to be the bottom because this tab is going to go into the base eventually. So take either side that you wanna start with, it doesn't really matter which. 
fold all of your little tabs along the score line, like so. Then we're just going to use these little tabs to attach along this curved edge. With that side attached, the next thing I'm going to do is attach this side. So I'm just going to fold along these score lines and then this little portion right here is going to go up at the top and then this is just going to go along the back. So normally in this case, the next thing you would think to do is probably attach this piece, but instead we are actually going to attach the top portion first. And to do that, we're just going to slip these pieces into this slit that's up here. Let me grab, here it is, my X-Acto knife and just kind of make sure there's enough room for it to go in. So these are just going to go in like this and then we can glue them down. So basically that little piece um, now is going to work as our hinge so that the uh, mixer can go up and down. And now we can attach this piece. Now the last thing to do is to attach this decorative panel to this portion right here. With that all in place, we are going to set this aside and work on our base. For our base, we just need this piece, this long strip, and this circle. So the first thing that we're going to do is fold along our score lines for this main base piece. And next, we're just gonna take these little tabs and glue them to their sides. The main part of our base is done, and the next thing we're going to do is to build in a little recess for where our bowl is going to fit. So to do that, I'm going to take this strip, give it a curl, then I'm going to fold in all the tabs um, on one side inward and all the tabs on the opposite side outward, and then attach this like so. Now that we have this little ring made, I'm going to add glue to each of these interior tabs. And then slip this circle inside. Now we just need to attach this to the underside of the base. Um, a couple of these tabs are a little bit long though, so I'm going to trim them. And then I think I'm going to do the ones on the opposite side as well, just at least this one to make sure that it doesn't get in the way of the base of the machine when I slip it in. Okay. All right. Let's do this. This piece does need to be centered pretty well, just so that the bowl can slip in nicely, otherwise it might not fit. Okay. And our base is done. The next thing we're gonna work on is our paddle attachment, which consists of these two pieces. 
these two circles, and then this strip. So like before, I am going to give this strip a curl. And then I'm going to fold my tabs, but instead of doing one side inward and one side outward, all of the, these tabs are going to go inward. With that ring made, the next thing we're going to do is attach one of our circles. And these two are almost the same, but one of them includes a little slit in the middle. Um, and that is the one, and I'm going to widen that just a little bit to make it easier to put the paddle attachment on it later on. Um, and then we're going to glue it like this. The joys of hot glue. <laughs> little pieces getting everywhere. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is before we attach the back side, we are going to um, glue these two um, paddle pieces together and then use these end tabs to slip them in and then glue them down. And I like to, when, whenever I have two pieces like this, I like to glue the tabs down in opposite directions to just make it extra secure. Now that that's attached, we can attach our other circle. This section is done. And the funny thing is, is I shared like a little preview photo of this project on Facebook and Instagram. And this piece seemed to give it away for a lot of folks because they're like, I would recognize that attachment anywhere. So a uh, good eye if you're one of the people that noticed the design of the paddle attachment and were able to figure out what the project was before I shared it. Okay, so to attach this piece, we're just going, going to use some hot glue and just stick it on. The thing is, is you just wanna kind of make sure it's centered here and then also you're going to leave like a little bit of an overhang just so the paddle can go into the bowl, into about the center of the bowl. So just about that much overhang is, is about good. So, okay, let's do it. With that attached, the next thing we're going to do is add a literal, literal, sorry, little decorative strip around the edge. Um, it's going to wrap from here. I'll just show you on the other one. It's going to wrap around this side to the front, all the way to the other side. Unfortunately, due to size constraints um, in the paper, I had to make this into two pieces. So we have one shorter piece that's going to go along one side, and then I have a longer piece that has a little score line in it. Let's see if I can even find it. I saw it a second ago. Where are you? There you are. And this is going to wrap around the front and onto the back side. Now our mixer is pretty much done besides the bowl and we're going to attach it to the base. To do that, we're going to use these four slits in the base along with these tabs here at the bottom. Now the last thing we're going to do before making our bowl is attach these two pieces. And these just go along the front and back side of your base, like so. All right, this is looking really pretty. I'm excited about these uh, paper colors. Okay, and finally, let's make our bowl. To do this, we're just going to start with these two pieces. Basically, all you need to do for this is to fold along the score lines. Then we're gonna curl these. And 
with that, you can kind of get an idea of how this is going to come together. Basically, we're going to be taking these little tabs. I'm just going to attach them a couple at a time to the wall next to them and create a bowl shape. Once you have this part done, you can repeat the same process with the other half. With these two pieces made, it's time to bring them together. You're basically just going to overlap the two octagon bases and then attach these tabs to the sides like, like you did before, except for it's gonna be a little bit more difficult, but you can do it, I believe in you. All right, our bowl is just about finished. The next thing to do is to attach the little circular base. And much like this piece, you're just going to start by curling, there it is, it's my folder. Curling this strip and uh, folding all of the little tabs inward. And this one's really just straightforward. We're just going to attach one circle to each side. And then we're just going to attach it to the bottom of our bowl, like this. Once the bowl is done, you can lift the top of your kitchen mixer, slip this in, and the bowl should just kind of fit snugly inside the base like that. Congratulations on completing this cute and whimsical paper craft. Thanks for watching this video and for crafting along with me. I hope you had an enjoyable time making this project. Don't forget, I always love to see your finished results, so be sure to share them with me on Instagram, tagging at Designs by Miss M. And special thanks to my wonderful supporters on Patreon. Thank you so much for your support. If you enjoyed this paper craft, please consider becoming a supporter. Not only will you help keep the designs coming, but you can have a chance to help me pick new designs in the future. As a patron, you can even get awesome exclusive content like postcards and enamel pins in the mail. Thanks again for watching and happy crafting!